الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be upon his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he deserves to be praised The one who has sent down revelation to guide the people from the darkness of sins and ignorance to the light of knowledge and faith and in our journey to seek Allah's pleasure, we are often faced with trials and difficulties. And that's just part of the test that was made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for His servants. The one who has created life and death to test you, whom amongst you who have the best of deeds. And we all need things to motivate us, right? To keep that, to be focused, to stay focused on that goal, the ultimate goal of seeking Allah's pleasure because this life is filled with desires. It is filled with difficulties. It is filled with things that consume our time and preoccupy us from what's important. And Ibn Qayyim, famous scholar, has mentioned in his book, The Two Migrations, four motivators or four principles every worshiper needs in his life in order for him to reach his ultimate goal, which is seeking Allah's pleasure. Now, these four goals or these four uh, principles, motivators, I like to call them, he has mentioned them and detailed them in his book. And when you look at them, these things are similar to what you read in books, in books where self-improvement books like uh, The Seven Habits or Stephen R. Covey and many other books. You find these same principles. But subhanAllah, we find that our scholars back in the day, they used to write these things and they used to uh, extract them from the text of the Quran and Sunnah. They were much smarter and much more detailed. So I decided to talk about these four motivators uh, in this lecture. The first of these motivators, he said that you should always concentrate on one goal at a time. So you have this ultimate goal, okay? And he gave an example. He's talking about the worshiper, how he reaches Allah's pleasure. And he gave the examples, and he applied all these principles uh, on that. He said, well, the worshiper, he seeks Allah's pleasure. His ultimate goal is paradise. But, and his tasks, his goals, will be obviously the daily worships. He said he should, the Muslim should concentrate on one goal at a time. For example, in our day, okay, we have five prayers. If you start your day, you're going to say, well, I'm going to perfect these five prayers and I'm going to do all the sunan, the preferred prayers, and I'm going to recite Quran and I'm going to give everyone his rights. These things all at the same time, you won't be able to concentrate on one. He said, no, concentrate on one goal at a time. For example, you wake up in the morning. Your, for, your first goal is to attend Fajr, for example, in congregation. This will be your first goal. So you concentrate on that goal, on that goal, and that goal alone. So you see, okay, you get ready, you wake up in the morning, you wake up early, you do wudu, and you don't procrastinate, you don't say, no, I'm gonna, you know, sit a while, I'm gonna relax. No, you say, this is my goal for now, I have to achieve this. Okay, and you go and you attend Fajr, alhamdulillah, you pray in congregation, then you think about your next goal, which is obviously a Dhuhr prayer. You say, okay, fine, uh, I'm gonna schedule it. For example, I have a lot of tasks at that time. Well, am I be, will I be able to pray it in jama'ah or will I be pray it at work? Or if I'm not gonna be able to pray it at work or in jama'ah, when will I pray it? Obviously, I have to pray it before Asr starts. So you're gonna be concentrating on that goal. And then, again, the next goal. The other thing that he mentioned regarding this, he said that you should, in order to reach your goal, you should take them step by step, gradually. What do you mean by that? For example, we all struggle to do Qiyam al-Layl, 
Okay, this is something that we all struggle, we all have difficulties in. You should try to do it gradually, starting from the easiest to the hardest. What do I mean? Scholars have said that Qiyam al-Layl, which is praying preferred prayers after the obligatory prayer, they said you should gradually increase. The basic level, the basic level, the absolute basic is to try to pray those units of prayer directly after Isha. Directly after Isha, because it's easier. You're not gonna be preoccupied with anything else. You're in the masjid, you see people praying, and because once you go back home, some people will be preoccupied with their family. They have to deal with problems. They might forget, and then they might eat a heavy dinner, and after that, they'll feel too dizzy and sleep directly, and next thing you know, they might wake up for Fajr, or they're gonna be too late. What happens is that Qiyam goes away. So you start with the safest route, praying Qiyam directly after Isha prayer. You finish Isha, you do your dhikr, remembrance, and then you start praying Qiyam. Two units, four units. When you're done, you just pray one unit of water, and that's it. That's the basic. Okay, now we have mastered this. One level higher is, you say, okay, fine. I'm going to pray it at home. Because the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has said that a man's prayer at home is much better than his prayer in my masjid, Masjid al-Nabawi, the Prophet's masjid, except for the obligatory prayer. So this is a general principle, which means that uh, preferred acts of worship, sunan of prayer, are more preferred to be prayed at home than in the masjid. So this is one level higher. You say, okay, fine. I finished the Isha prayer. I did my remembrance. I'm going to pray my uh, qiyam just before I sleep. And this was the, this was the advice of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira used to say that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, advised him on three things. Of these three things, he said, to pray with her before I sleep. To pray with her before I sleep. To make sure that I pray it. Because they said that Abu Huraira will stay up all night memorizing the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. So the Prophet's advice is try to pray it before you sleep. So this is one level higher. To pray, with, to pray your qiyam before you sleep. If you've mastered that, there's one level. There's another level which is higher. Which is trying to pray qiyam after you sleep. So you sleep and you wake up in the final third of the night and you try to pray. It's much more difficult, but the reward is better. But scholars have said you should not try that level unless you have mastered the ones before. Why? Because usually if you try to do it from the, from the get-go, from the start, what's going to happen is that you're going to get bored. You're going to get too tired and you might just do it for one day, one night, two nights, and then you might stop it for one year. So they said, try the basic, okay, basic level. Master that, and then do one level higher, which is praying at home. And after that, you, should, you can try to pray uh, at the final third of the night. Now, this is in terms of Qiyam Layl. So this principle is to break up your goal into smaller goals, concentrating on one goal at a time and gradually increasing. So that's the first principle. Now. The second principle is to remember your final destination. Now for a Muslim, that is what? Remembering paradise, Jannah. Sometimes we're preoccupied, we, we're tired, okay, we, we lose sight of our goal. We start thinking, lives get difficult. We need something that motivates us. Keep thinking about paradise. Read some texts of the Quran and Sunnah regarding the description of paradise. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepare in paradise for his servants? Okay, what's waiting for the righteous service in paradise? The castles over there, the palaces made out of gold, made out of silver, the rivers of honey, of milk, okay, of wine. All these things waiting for his service. And when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, described the hadith where Musa asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's an authentic hadith. He said, who are those who are in the lowest level in paradise? He didn't ask about the highest. He asked about the lowest first. 
And he said, he's the man who's going to be burned in hellfire for so and so years. And after that, he'll be entering paradise. After, obviously, gradually, he, he will ask first to just be removed from hellfire. And after that, he'll be asked to be put next to a tree. And after that, he'll be hearing the voices in paradise. He'll say, oh Allah, you know, get, I want to enter paradise. So that last man who's going to be entering paradise, he's going to say to Allah, what am I going to find in paradise? I'm, going to, I'm the last one entering paradise. Everyone has took all the treasures. There's nothing for me. Then Allah will tell him, will ask him, will it suffice you? Or are you pleased with having all of the, having the kingdom of one of the kings in the dunya? SubhanAllah, of course, a king in the dunya. He said, yes. I'm pleased with that. He said, okay, you will have that. And like it. And like it. And like it. And like it. So five times the wealth of a king in dunya. So the man was like, I'm happy with that. So Allah says, you'll get all this. Plus, وَعَشْرَةُ أَبْعَافِ So ten times five, which is fifty. So he'll get fifty-five times the wealth of a king in dunya. That's a lot. And that's the last person who's going to be entering paradise. Everyone else who will be entering paradise before him will have something better than this. So this, will, this is the last person who's going to be entering paradise, the lowest person in paradise. He's going to have this, 55 times the wealth of a king in dunya. Who here owns this? No one. Okay. So 55 times the wealth of a king. SubhanAllah. And you know what? In the hadith, the man, then he says to Allah, are you making fun of me? Yeah. Are you making fun of me and you're Allah? So the Prophet then smiles, you know, he says, Are you making fun of me and you're the Lord of the worlds? Yeah. So he says, this is going to be too good to be true. SubhanAllah, not only that, but he's going to get this and everything that he desires in paradise will be his. And SubhanAllah, that's just the lowest level. What about the person higher than him? What about those who are 10 levels higher? What about the highest paradise? So when, when Moses asked, Musa asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, فَأَعْلَاهُمْ يَا رب. What about those who, have, who will get the highest in paradise? Allah then says, those are ones that I have created for me. Those are the servants. Those are the ones that I created for my sake. He has, Allah azza wa jal has, Planted their paradise, غَرَسْتُ كَرَامَتْهُمْ بِيَدِي He said. So their paradise, their level is created and planted by Allah's hand. So look at this honor. So it's something, you know, everything in paradise is something unimaginable. Even if all the humans and all the jinn from the time of Adam till the end of time, they try to imagine how paradise will look like, they won't be able to. Because Allah said, لا عين رأت the Prophet Muhammad said, لا عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب الشر. No eye will see anything like the thing in paradise. And no one will hear anything like that in paradise. And no one will imagine or it will not, it will not come to anyone's heart or mind anything in paradise. So even if you try to imagine what's in paradise, you'll be far from close. So this is what Allah has prepared for so those righteous people. So number two is remembering your prize in paradise. Number three, he said, remembering that our time is short. It's very important. We don't have all eternity to worship Allah. Our time here is fixed and it's limited. We don't know. We don't know when, it's, when this will end. Some people died like 35, some people 36, some people 40, 60, less, more. Especially in these times, we find people dying suddenly, without any, subhanAllah, symptoms, without any signs. So you don't know when this test will end. That's why we have to take advantage of every opportunity that we have. Okay? And, subhanAllah, inshallah, soon Ramadan will be coming. And that's an opportunity for every single one of us to take advantage. We, don't say that I'm going to perfect the next Ramadan. You don't know what's going to happen. You might not find or might not reach next Ramadan. This might be your final Ramadan. This night might be your final night. You should do Qiyam. 
You should do witr. You should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. You should repent to Allah. You don't know what's going to happen. So our time here is short. And number four, which is the final of the four, he said failure is not an option. You sh there is no way you should tell yourself, no matter what's going to happen, I cannot fail. You can't afford to fail. Why is that? Think about it. What's going to happen to a Muslim if he fails this test? Any test in this life, if you fail, there's some way or another to make it up. Or the circumstance or the things that are built on, a, on that are not serious. Except this test. This test of life. Because if you fail, you're going to be in hellfire. And that's no joke. And uh, as I mentioned, when we were talking about the blessings of paradise, these things are unimaginable. But also the torment in hellfire is also unimaginable. So think about it this way. You're running to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, when you're tired, you remember that what's going to happen if you reach that goal. You're going to get that paradise. You're going to be with your loved ones. You're going to be with all the righteous people. And if you wait too long, and if you don't catch up, there's something behind you that's also following you, which is hellfire. That is why we should also always remember this. If you're not motivated enough to run for paradise, well, what's behind you should motivate you because hellfire is behind you. And if you fail to reach paradise, there's no other route except that route behind you, which is hellfire. That is why it's serious to take this very serious and to really understand what's at stake here. So subhanAllah, this test that we have, if you pass, mashallah, you're with the most righteous people. You're going to get the best of rewards. But if you fail, you're going to be with the worst of the worst. There's nothing in the middle. Okay, you, there's no, nothing in the middle. Either a pass or a fail. That's why we should take this seriously, take advantage of the things, of the opportunities that we have. And this is all that I wanted to share with my brothers for today. Hada wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Jazakum Allah khair.